very much and welcome to the first, the inaugural Friday debate. And uh, these students, these participants uh, in this first debate have been reading about Mr. P.T. Barnum. And they're going to debate this question. The resolution, Mark Twain was right. Barnum represents everything crass and self-serving and the American character. All right, what's your name? Um, I'm Cece. Uh, Karina. I'm Christine. Okay, and I'm Jessica. So how are you guys feeling? You feeling confident? Yeah. Yeah. Sophia. Madalena. Julia. And Kaisha. And you're going to say that this statement is correct. Is correct. Barnum represents everything crass and self-serving in the American character by Mark Twain. I think everyone here knows Mark Twain, right? He wrote the book Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. Despite who wrote it, we agree with that. Because even though Barnum did some good things for the community, such as giving money to the charity, he was only doing it so he could have a good reputation. And it's all about the money. And if Barnum had a good reputation, then more people would, would visit his museum more frequently and he would get paid more. So pretty much it's all going around about money. He, he not only considers about money, but he also considers about his audience. And this, this can say that he is not self-serving. He, he, although he um, like make money and like in a really bad way but he still respect his audience and impress their his audience so that his audience would pay the money and the audience would think that the money is worth it. Well he's earning at the same time while his audience enjoys his circus and they That's even cool. go to the museum a lot. Okay so isn't earning reputation um, good for him so that people go to his museum? Isn't that like good? It's not too bad? Well, look, look, to go to his museum, you have to pay, right? Yeah. And then all the things that he did in his museum were all lies. Yeah, lying and exaggerating is a common way to make money in business. Really, just lies? Seriously, if you teach, you don't teach lies to your students, do you? Miss businesses. What type, please? Well, for example, well, when you're selling things, you can like make an advertisement about some stuff that are not real, but people, they, they know that it's not true. You can tell. Well, if, it's, if, the, if the thing or the item they sell doesn't make sense, or doesn't look real, um, oh, yes, ads no. um, make exaggeration in their advertisement so that people will be interested to go look at the brand and you know what's Yeah, but look, you said that people don't believe that. But here, people actually believe. So he was lying and earning money, which is not true, right? He was just lying to get earned the people's money. And on your opening statement, you said that he gave he let he gave his audience respect. But by lying, you really think that this is respect? He, it, <laughs> you go first. 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 Yeah, maybe he does care a bit too much about money, but still, um, it wasn't completely his fault. As it says on page 11, his grandfather Finn was the person who, who was told him to save his pennies, like save every single penny that he has. So it wasn't totally Barnum who learned himself to just save money like so much. If there wasn't that grandfather Finn, I don't think he would actually care about money as much as now. We think Mark Twain was jealous of Barnum. So, of course he said Barnum is bad. It actually depends on your perspective. And you guys said that Barnum did everything that was self-serving, but that's not true. He was playing Jenny, you know, in one of the chapters. She, she, he was paying Jenny to come to America and try to bring opera to America. 
and Barnum even paid 30 reporters to write Jenny in their newspapers. And that's really, that was just trying to bring opera to America so everyone can enjoy it. Barnum doesn't know how to deal with people, which is true. He had left his children, his wife, Clarity, Charity, so he could do his business. Colleen said that she always came uh, second to business, which means that Barnum actually never cared about them. He just cared about the money he made for his family. Barnum is un untruthful and he creates a chain reaction with his lies. He lied about the mermaid and the hairy horse. When he lied, uh, uh, and the woolly horse. When, when he lied about the woolly horse, he got other people involved. And that's another link for the chain. If you lie, that is not really respecting the audience. Because if I, for example, say to you, um, and I'm selling carpets. Um, these are made of like the best silk in the world. Some people will buy them, they take it home, and it's actually not that good. So that is not really respecting the audience. The only way Barnum could actually draw attention to his circus or museum was to put up post was to put put up posters and go on a newspaper. But although he could have told the truth, he told lies. And even though he actually donated his money for charities um, or for other events for the community, Barnum was only doing this for his reputation. Why would actually Mark Twain be jealous of Barnum? They're in a different category. Mark Twain actually writes books to get famous, but Barnum did entertainment for people. Because Mark Twain made a lot. Well, why would Mark Twain be jealous of Barnum? If it Mark Twain made a lot of money. So Barnum actually gets a bit more audience, like audience that he can actually face. Or it, if he's not better than Mark Twain or didn't make like much money than him, Mark Twain will like think, why does he like make so much money? He's a bad person. Then why don't they just get like work harder and get more money themselves? You can always do that. Yes, then why you, you have competitors, right? Yes, but you want to actually write bad things about them to make them less famous and not work hard yourself? It's quite common when, at, like, when you're doing business. But it distracts your time. Yeah. Which wow. is also a way that helps you make money. And also, it's true. he said that Barnum is bad, right? So, except for Mark Twain, there are still, I believe that there can still be many other people who actually think that Barnum is really bad. So, actually, if he writes something and other people agree, he might actually get a bit more audience. Like, a, a guy said, said that Barnum is bad. No. Okay, that's the end of that crossfire. We're going to take a one minute break to allow you, uh, the teams, to prepare for the grand crossfire. How's it going? What do you think so far? Um, I, think, uh, I think they're all quite good. Yeah. Um, but, or, like, so I'm looking at some of your numbers. It looks yeah. like. But, like, I go through a tie. It's like Khan. Seeing this? It's like Khan is leading. Is that right? No, they're tied. They're tied? Okay. What about how the debate's going so far? Um, well. I think it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, can we take a look at your numbers? Oh, so you haven't started. I haven't started. I'm still thinking. You're still thinking. How do you feel about how the debate is going so far? For that, um, I was thinking that the debate was like in the first round where one speaker one and two they were fighting. The cons were were were, were offering like better arguments. Mm. But when 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 the speaker three and four of the Korean CC is told. Pressed down by Julia and Kaija. Pressed down? In the crossfire? Yeah, because um, Julia stated that how would Mark Twain be jealous? Mark Twain writes books and Barnum does circus. Daniel, how do you feel about that? I kind of agree with him. And like I think that the debate is quite interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound the bell. We thought it was crass, right? But we don't think so. Because, well, it wasn't his choice to like, not go to school, but it could show that he was really educated. And, he, and um, when he grew up, he had a lot of educated friends. Barnum may have been educated in 
math, science, business, business. Like, you didn't know how to interact with people. How do you know that? Can you, 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 you can tell. Can you proof? Yes, because he actually only told lies to the audience. He never faced the truth. Wouldn't he want his children to be loved more than he was? Well, of course, but he, he's a busy showman, and he, in the book it says that he often visited his family. He even recommended to buy a mansion, but they refused. No, it was, it was only his mother, when his mother was there, Irina. But even though he was... But not his family. But even though he was really busy, he still had a visit. Then how did Francis die? Was he there for, when she died? And he hardly saw his daughters. Yes. His daughter died so young, so young, two years old. And well, you guys gave an example that, um, like, car you guys are like, um, car this carpet is like the best goat in the world. And but when you go home, it's not as good. So, but did this happen in Barnum's museum? Did they go home and say Barnum's museum is not so good? Did this happen? Maybe not. But they don't didn't know what was behind the lies, did they? Did they? Did, it, did they know they that the light? Are they please happy? Please interrupt, please. Did they know that? Please. Did they know that that boy, four-year-old boy, was eleven? No, it was. He wasn't eleven. He was four. He was short. And he, Barnum said that he was 11. Perhaps Barnum was not perfect, and no one, no one is perfect. But when he made money, he tried to care about the audience, but sometimes lying is a way of making money, but in business. So we're, we're saying that Mark, that Mark Twain, the word he said was not true. Barnum was not a press, and he, like, he was not only self-serving. He he was he did not only lie. He did even worse stuff. He was mean, heartless, and selfish in our eyes. He was he couldn't even bear to maybe close, shut down his museum for maybe like a couple days to just go visit his her his daughter that had died. He had three more the other daughters, but they weren't treated that well either. So it was just sad. I don't think any of us here in this room would want to have a father that would come to your funeral or something. He cared too much about his business. I didn't care much about his family. If he did, then we would definitely be against that. But in the book, they didn't write that much about it because he didn't. brings debate one to an end. Thank you to all of the participants for your hard work and for your participation and for your demonstration of respect for each other. Thank you very much.